Hey guys, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to customize your back to top button in Divi. Now default, when you scroll down, if you have your back to top button enabled, you're gonna see it slide in from the right and it's gonna have this design. It's gonna have a little radius on the left and bottom left of the actual button and it just has a general basic design. Now a telltale sign that you're using Divi among other things is this little back to top button. So I try to spice this up on every website that I do and I recommend that you do have a back to top button on every site because it's very important in mobile. You don't want your users to have to manually scroll back up to the top of the page to get information or to the menu. So having a back to top button is very crucial. So we're gonna customize this. I'm gonna show you how to make this your own on either your site or maybe some sites you're working on. So for example, well, let's go ahead and take a look at a site I completed recently. When you scroll down, instead of it being on the right and up a little bit, you can see it's right in the bottom corner. It's circular and it has a hover over state. You'll notice by default, there's no hover over, so it's just a plain button. And on here, it goes from red to black. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also gonna show you how to position it. So if we look at another site I did, when we scroll down, you'll notice it pops in from the bottom, but it's kind of stuck, it's fixed on the bottom. And again, has a nice hover over state. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure in your site that you go to your Divi theme options. And if you're new to Divi, you wanna make sure that the back to top button is enabled. If you have it disabled, it's not gonna show up. So we wanna enable this and we wanna save. So let's go ahead and go back out to our site. And again, this is what we're seeing initially. It's up a little bit on the right part of the screen and it fades in from the right. Now, you'll notice here that a lot of the CSS tricks that I do are all the same. The way I customize my sites is pretty much the same method for everything. So if you've seen some of my previous tutorials, we're gonna use the exact same methods. And the way I start designing anything, unless I have the code saved, is I right click and I use inspect element since I'm using Chrome. And from the get go, I just inspect this element and you can see here are all the settings that we're going to adjust. So for example, let's say we want to place this in a different spot. We can see in the code here that the scroll to top icon is 125 pixels from the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make this sit closer to the bottom. Instead of 125, let's just take that two out and let's make it 15. Boom, automatically gives it a different look. Now let's say I wanna move it from the right, similar to the way I had the auto site. Well, from the right, you can see it's set at zero. So let's give that a right margin of 15 pixels as well. And boom, there we go. You can see it places it differently. And then finally, you can see that the border radius is on the left and the bottom left, and it's kind of a right angle on each, on each side of the right of the button. So what I'm gonna do, instead of messing with this code, which I feel is a little jumbled, I'm just gonna give it a simple border Oop, not Borfer, border radius. And we're gonna do, let's say 25. Let's see how that looks. Boom, a border radius of 25 makes that look like a complete circle. So we're already kind of halfway there with customizing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the actual code that is the class. I'm gonna go into my style sheet, which is linked to my theme, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in that custom code. Now we don't need to take all this code because the button knows this code is there. As again, my style sheet is just basically overriding what is there in Divi automatically. So I'm gonna take all the customizations that I put in there, and I'm gonna drop it in here and make sure it looks all nice. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then once it tells me that that's saved, let's go ahead and clear the cache and see what this looks like to so make sure that that took. Okay, so now when I scroll down, we should see those style changes. And boom, there we go. Looks different, looks pretty awesome already. Now, I wanna show you how to do, well, we're gonna change the color, but I also wanna show you how to change the hover state. So again, you know, I like to have some actions anytime there's a call to action or something that you hover over. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna look into the old code, and I can see that it has a background color of kind of a transparent gray. So you can see when you scroll down, you know, I, I kind of like that, it's a subtle gray. What I might do in this case is I might just tweak it for this tutorial. Let's give it like a, um, yeah, maybe like a subtle, kind of a kind of a blue gray, something like that. And here again, in inspect element, I can change the opacity. So if I can make it, you know, as light or as dark as I want. Now with back to top buttons, I don't want this to be a focal point necessarily. I want people to know it's there, but I kind of usually like to make mine a little transparent. And that way, you know, somebody can see it there, but they don't have to click it. So I'm gonna copy this background code here and I'm gonna drop it in my style sheet. 
And again, once I put that in there, that should look nice. Now, what we're gonna do is add a hover over state. So when we scroll over this, let's say I wanna make this like a nice blue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole section of code right here, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna just add hover at the end so it gives it a hover over state. And the only thing I need to do at this point is just to change the background color. So in this state right here, let's go ahead and pick a color first of all. Let's go ahead and pick this and let's do, yeah, maybe like a light blue to really kind of make it very known that, hey, when you scroll over this, you're, it's gonna do something. So we're gonna go ahead and take that and I tell you what, let's put the opacity all the way up just for the sake of this. And if that code looks a little funky to you, what's kind of cool, what you can do in inspect element is right here, if you don't wanna take all these RGB numbers, you can click this and it'll give you the hexadecimal, which is a little easier to, uh, to deal with. So that's what I'm gonna put here in the background color. And again, this is how easy it is to change the colors. All you have to do is just give it a hover state and then just change the background color. So now that that told me it's saved, let's go ahead and clear the cache. And when I scroll down, we should see the design. And then when I hover over it, we should see that light blue. Boom, isn't that awesome? It's so easy, just a couple lines of CSS and it can dramatically change your site. Now, what's really cool about this too is you can customize this to make it your own. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna inspect element and I can go back into the code. And honestly, guys, this kind of stuff I just play around with. Um, you know, it's nothing too complicated. Once you, once you get a few of the, the core elements to CSS, you can really tweak things to make your own. And again, I'm doing a lot of things I did in previous tutorials. So let's say I want this to sit at the bottom this time. I can just go bottom, you know, zero. I can just bring that down to zero. If I wanted the border radius different, you could change that here. Oh, we'll go back up to my code here. You could change this to, you know, like five. And again, you can just really make this your own. You can even change the animation. So here's some text where you can see the actual animation. If I wanted to change that, let's say I wanted to change it to fade in from the bottom. I'm just gonna take this code that shows me that it's available right now. And actually I can just change it right here. I can go fade in bottom. So now you can see right there, all, all it did was it's gonna fade in from the bottom. And you can see right here, the code is slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole code and I'm gonna just drop it above the actual icon itself. And you can see fade in bottom right here. Now this is telling all browsers to recognize this. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace fade in right to fade in bottom on all those. And now when I save this, we should see this fade in from the bottom with again, that styling that I created. Boom, fades in from the bottom, scroll over to that nice light blue. And that's it guys, just some CSS tweaks and you can completely make this your own. Now, one last thing I wanna show you, and I wanna show you how to change the icon, which will really separate your back to top buttons from other Divi websites. So if you've followed my previous tutorials, you notice I've got some custom icons in my menu. We're gonna follow the exact same methods. Again, guys, I pretty much do the same methods on all my sites. And you know, once you get a few core basics with CSS, you can make anything look awesome and custom with Divi. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. Let's go ahead and again, inspect element on this back to top button. Now you'll notice that in the actual element here, it gives me a before class, which is exactly what we did up on top in my menu and my after element in the menu. So if you didn't get a chance to see this tutorials, I'd recommend going through that because we're gonna do that same method here. So I'm gonna paste this in here and all we're gonna do is change the content, which is gonna be this little icon right here. So I'll make sure you have this link, but we're going back to our Elegant Themes icon font list. And let's say I want, uh, let's do this one right here. That's a nice you know, indicator that you're going back to top. Again, we don't wanna take anything from the X or before it, we just wanna take the numbers 21. So we're gonna go in here and now, I'm not sure how this reads, this number two. Uh, the way I've done this, and I found this out by trial and error, is that you have to have a forward slash, then this number. So you always have to have that forward slash, which essentially covers up the X and all these numbers right here. So we're gonna do content forward slash 21. We're gonna save this. And let's go ahead and go back to our site. We're gonna clear the cache and fingers crossed if this worked, we should see our new styles and we should see a different element as, as the icon. Let's go ahead and scroll down and boom, there we go. And then from here, you know, you might just wanna tweak this a little bit. You can see that element is kind of a little big for that. So maybe we wanna maybe do some padding or something like that. Let's try that out. 
yeah, that looks good. Look at that, that's perfect right there. Just a little bit of padding and boom, we've got a sweet little customized uh, back to top button right there. So again, I'm just dropping my padding in my style sheet. I'm saving that and man, that's awesome. Easy peasy, totally fun. You guys can really change this for all your sites. And again, what I would do is just save this code and then every time you have a new site, just enable your back to top button, put this in there and then just tweak the settings as you would like them and you guys are good to go. So let me know if this helps you out. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have fun customizing your back to top buttons. Cheers, guys.